Welcome to Across the Balkans. Great to have you with us on the show. I'm Ludovica Brignola. Ten years ago, Croatia joined the European Union as the bloc's 28th member. A lot has happened since then, with several major events testing the group's unity and relevance in a fast-changing world. From the ongoing migrant crisis that began in 2015 to the COVID-19 pandemic and most recently the war in Ukraine, the EU has seen numerous cracks in its unity. But Croatia has clearly sided with the bloc and has pushed human rights, democracy and strong institutions. And this year, Croatia gained entry into the Eurozone and the Schengen area, which has had a dramatic impact on its demographics and economy. Velko Skendereja went to Zagreb to find out more. Croatia is in celebratory mood these days. On July 1st, the country marked 10 years since it joined the European Union. A decade of membership has provided an opportunity to look back on how much has been done and whether it made the right decision. Može se reći da prema nekim našim istraživanjima mali je udio onih tvrdih euroskeptika koji bi htjeli da Hrvatska izađe iz Europske unije i on se smanjio u ovih deset godina. No, postoji dio stanovništva koji je dosta kritičan prema Europskoj uniji i nekim njeznim politikama. A survey conducted by Petrovic and his colleagues in fact showed that a majority of the population was against joining the Eurozone. Many of them believe it reduces Croatia's sovereignty for the benefit of Brussels. And some, like Nino Raspudic, are also critical of the so-called decadence of the EU. Razočarenje ovih deset godina kao rezultat općeg stanja u Evropskoj uniji, jer to više nije ono što je bilo u dobra vremena, i s druge strane nesposobnost hrvatskih upravljačkih elita, između ostalog i zbog kriminala i korupcije i nepotizma, da se iskoristi ono što taj okvir nudi. However, it would be incorrect to say that the state did not profit. Croatia has made a surplus of 11 billion dollars from the monetary exchange with EU Treasury. Since 2013, its GDP per capita rose from 11,000 dollars to 18,000. Exports have also grown by 150 percent in 10 years. So has the EU changed Croatia for the better? Economic data says it has. Today, Croatia is a more organized country, standards are higher. But could it have done better? Of course. One downside is that the speed of economic change led to a vast exodus. As much as 10% of Croatia's population left over the past decade to wealthier member states. And it was not only the speed of economic changes that pushed roughly 300,000 Croats abroad. It also has a lot to do with economic policies that favored investments in state-owned enterprises and infrastructure over encouraging entrepreneurship and technological transformation. Trebala je Hrvatska onda stvoriti uvjete za takav tip reindustrializacije na temeljima, na principima industrijske paradigme 4.0 i to nije učinila. Mi vidimo da su se Hrvatske vlade u protekle deset godina umarale na pokušaju spašavanja onih industrija koje se jednostavno nisu mogle spasiti poput brodogradnje. The president of Croatia, who fervently advocated joining the bloc ten years ago as prime minister, is also critical. U Hrvatskoj je taj kumulativni agregatni rast od 13. do 22. bio 35-6%. Sve krize, ebb and flow koje smo imali. U Srbiji je isto, u Crnoj Gori je isto. Tako da je ovih deset godina ni uspjeh ni neozpjeh. So where do Western Balkan states now stand in the context of the Union? The accession of Croatia after the longest negotiation ever in 2013 was hailed as a historic event not only for Zagreb and Brussels, but also for the region. But 10 years later, Croatia still remains the last country to join the Union. Croatia's 10-year journey is proof that the accession process is difficult but possible. The Western Balkans should try to catch the momentum now that the focus is on them again and before the so-called enlargement fatigue returns to the corridors of Brussels. The European Union also seems eager to show that it's still expanding and integrating societies that wish to be part. And this is constantly repeated by the highest European officials. 
and it is time for all sides to get real about accession. Croatia has shown that enlargement is a win-win, so we must keep our door open for those to, who look to Europe as their home. We need to deliver on our promises and we can never be afraid of change and reform. It seems Brussels is committed to the idea of European unity and cares that the countries of the region follow Croatia's path. But how sincere are these words? Former Croatian Prime Minister Jadranka Kosor, who negotiated the lifting of the Slovenian blockade, which had prevented Croatia's entry into the EU, is unconvinced. Treba biti potpuno iskra, nikome osobito u Europskoj uniji. Kao ni kad sam ja pokušavala deblokirati pregovore, nije stalo do tog proširenja. Dakle, to je jedna floskula koja se upotrebljava zato što ona jednostavno zgodna proevropskim političarima, a zapravo nikakvog napretka nema. All countries in the Western Balkans have candidate status except Kosovo. Montenegro opened all negotiation chapters, then closed only three, but none in the last two years. Serbia has opened only 18 chapters and closed two. Despite there being no formal decision, the negotiations are practically frozen. After a long wait, North Macedonia and Albania opened negotiations only in March 2020, but to this day they don't have any open chapters. Bosnia and Herzegovina received candidate status in December last year and has yet to fulfill the conditions to begin negotiations, so there really hasn't been any progress for years. But Kosor also warns that the problem is not one-sided. Države Zapadnog Balkana ne pokazuju nikakav entuzijazam. Gdje su reforme u sustavu pravosuđa? Gdje je vidljiva borba protiv korupcije? Od Srbije do Bosne i Hercegovine. Nema toga. Kosor believes that the Western Balkan states have fallen into a limbo that can only be solved after a generational change of political elites. Since Russia's attack on Ukraine, the EU has wanted the countries of the region under its umbrella. So alternative ideas have appeared, such as the European political community proposed by French President Emmanuel Macron, which brings the countries closer to the EU without full membership. As it stands, the Western Balkan states have made modest progress in meeting the EU criteria and not entirely through any fault of their own. Residents in the region have long turned away from Brussels, blaming what they call years of neglect. And shifting this sentiment may require a lot of will and energy from both sides. Otherwise, Croatia could well remain the youngest member of the European Union for at least another decade if not more. Veto Skanderija, TRT World, Zagreb, Croatia. Joining me now is Marina Dabić. She is a professor at the University of Zagreb. Thank you very much for joining us today. So, Hello, everyone. Marina, for Croatia, the EU accession process was very long and complex. Could you please uh, summarize what the main sticking points were back then, but also what changes this process initially prompted in the country? Um, indeed, the Croatia has a um, long and hard process to assess the EU. It longs longer than 10 years, but it's also a story of changes, of increasing democracy, it's a um, learning process and also the process of uh, huge success. Uh, during those uh, uh, period, uh, Croatia uh, changed in administrative part, uh, it changed uh, in the level of democracy, increased the trade, increased the transparency, and most, most of uh, all uh, access to the European Union uh, you, uh, market and free trade zone uh, really uh, help us uh, during this process. Uh, we are watching some of the most uh, um, important days uh, of celebration when we join the EU. In meantime, uh, one of the biggest success is the join the Schengen zone. And uh, uh, since the 1st January this year, 
uh, uh, implementation of Euro. So we are now um, fully integrated in huge European uh, family. Right. It's a very complex uh, process, uh, Marina, but some analysts uh, say that after joining the EU and possibly due to a lack of preparation, Croatia has been uh, quite slow in sort of taking the advantage of the opportunities offered by the EU. What do they mean exactly? And do you agree with this assessment? Uh, actually, we in the last uh, months, we uh, showed that the growth uh, in last 10 years uh, um, is stable. Uh, it's three times bigger than ever. Uh, we are um, we have very uh, high growth uh, um, uh, in the EU, even in the period uh, recession. Um, uh, uh, additionally, we have some challenges, and we, uh, as a EU, it's uh, not just the war in Ukraine, but it was the presidency of six months uh, of the Croatia when we had in same time huge devastating earthquake in the capital city Zagreb and the COVID. But in all time, we um, put as a set of our priorities a strong Europe in the world of challenges. Um, we accepted that uh, uh, we are the part of the Europe that connect and also um, uh, influence of the Europe in the um, in, uh, worldwide is much bigger, bigger than ever. Of course, Croatia is a small country. We are less than 4 million inhabitants. But uh, um, it's mm -hmm. all world who said um, small is beautiful. So we do believe that um, this access to the euro as a currency um, uh, um, really uh, helped our tourism. And uh, be part of the Schengen uh, is additionally advantage for our trade, uh, movement of the people, mm -hmm. um, a work for, a flow, and uh, uh, unemployment rate is uh, lower than ever. Right. On this point, well, as you said, it's a small country. Uh, over these 10 years, Croatia has seen tremendous economic gains and growth. But at the same time, there's also been some downsides, right, including a mass exodus of young people who have moved to richer EU countries uh, to work. What can Croatia do to lure those people back and slow down migration? Uh, there is no problem in migration. M migration is a part of every single country in the world. So what we need to think is about not just about drain, uh, brain drain, but also to think about the brain gain. And uh, we know that digital nomads is very popular now, and I'm just working on mm -hmm. one Horizon 2020 application with the partners from Turkey, in which we would like to stimulate uh, people to come and live in Croatia because uh, we have an amazing, beautiful country, uh, natural uh, um, um, parks and uh, sea. So the climate is very good and IT uh, development right. in the country is a big. Uh, additionally, Croatia has uh, uh, two unicorns. And according to the number of the unicorns, according to the um, uh, world level, we are among three countries with the highest number of unicorns per uh, million of inhabitants. It's really, really good to hear about this uh, advancement. And at the same time, uh, Marina, like most European countries, Croatia uh, as well has its Eurosceptic parties. What main objections are these parties raising and how popular are they in the country? Actually, uh, we voted for EU uh, 10 years before we joined it. Uh, uh, since the war uh, in the Croatia, we wanted to be part of the uh, democratic uh, uh, world and the world of the EU. Uh, so we are very proud on our membership and our Schengen zone, um, uh, our small influence to uh, EU family and uh, uh, um, skeptics of the EU. Uh, complain about inflation, uh, prices, rates, but it's much more skeptic about the EU currency than uh, membership of the EU. Uh, because we would like to be small, as we are, 
-hmm. but it would like to be open. Okay. And uh, um, if if you belong to the uh, and have a free access to uh, almost uh, uh, 500 million inhabitants of the EU, and right. you can travel without a passport, and you can uh, uh, use the telephone uh, everywhere in the Europe as the same prices. Um, it's huge privilege, and uh, uh, actually, we are happy that uh, together we are stronger. Right, and you're happy to be small, so but you I want to. I do not see uh, um, influence of the skeptics um, in our country as a, a big problem. All right, so you're happy to be small, but you want to be an open country, as you say. One last question quickly. Uh, Croatia's prime minister also said that Russia's aggression has changed uh, the way members feel about EU enlargement. What impact has the war in Ukraine uh, had on uh, enlarging the bloc, in your opinion? In, in this moment, we have uh, uh, two free countries that are, are trying to join the EU, uh, and they are in negotiation process. We never told, uh, uh, and uh, uh, no one in Europe believed that the uh, EU is a, a closed club. Uh, mm -hmm. We always uh, open uh, doors uh, to every country who are willing to join the, uh, and follow European values. Uh, but of course, uh, we find out that uh, United Europe uh, is important more than ever, because uh, the war in Ukraine affected all the Europe and also affected all the world. Um, uh, hopefully, Croatia started with energy transition uh, early. Uh, so we are not so affected with uh, um, uh, problems with uh, distribution of energy um, uh, from Russia. Uh, we had a, a strong uh, export uh, um, to Russia in the past, but we follow all sanctions that uh, EU um, um, uh, integrated. Right, and unfortunately we are running out of time, but Marina Dabic, thank you very much for joining us today.